What's going on everyone and welcome to Movie Emporium's TV review of the new Netflix original series, The Irregulars. Uh, this series of course is created by Tom Bidwell. Now before we begin, as I always say, if you like my channel, hit that subscribe button to join Movie Emporium, hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next. If you like this video, awesome, hit that like button as well as commenting below on the video to watch it including this one. Okay, everyone, uh, this is a early review of The Irregulars that's a premiere on Netflix. Uh, thank you, Netflix, for allowing me to see this early. It releases on March 26th, all eight episodes, which are about 40 to 50 minutes long. And so what exactly is The Irregulars? Well, The Irregulars, like I said, is an eight-episode season. Uh, it basically follows about four or five individual young people who are basically B, who's like the main kind of leader of the group, was played by Thaddean Graham. Uh, Jesse, who's played by Darcy Shaw, who's the, uh, basically sister of B. Uh, we also have Spike, who's played by Mikhail David, and we have Billy, who's played by Jojo Macari. And they're street urchins. They live off the streets. They're very, very poor. Their parents abandon them and stuff like that, so they have to survive on their wits and whatnot. And in the process, we have a character named Leo, who's played by Harrison Osterfeld, and he's an individual who is a of the high aristocracy realm. He's a prince. He is living in a castle. He's a hemophiliac, so his basically royal guards and stuff like that will not let him get out in the open. And uh, he one day escapes and joins this band of merry young kids that are hired by an individual named John Watson. Now, if you've been living under a rock for the last 100 and plus years, you'll know that John Watson, of course, is Sherlock Holmes' uh, second in command or companion or whatever you want to call him. And of course, he's played by Royce Pearson. And so what John Watson is doing is because of the nature of the mystery or crime that's being committed, he needs individuals who basically are not well known or just people off the street. But because of the nature of who these individual young kids are, they are the perfect fit to solve these mysteries, which are in the end very much in the X-Files territory, which is what, you know, the creator of the series, Tom Bigwell, actually uh, referenced was X-Files and murder mysteries and so on and so forth. And so this series is basically about these young individuals solving mysteries under the guise of John Watson and himself while the character of Sherlock Holmes is very much hidden and very elusive and nobody knows what's really happening to him. And on the other side, there's actually an overarching story that involves Jesse having these nightmares about plague doctors that leads into the overall narrative that leads into the last, you know, for all eight episodes, which I'm not going to spoil because it would actually ruin the whole series for everyone. And she basically meets a guy named the Linen Man. And the Linen Man's a guy who lives in New Orleans who's actually there to help her in her dreams. And so the story is just basically... These individuals solving mysteries, and then we're having an overarching mystery on top of that that is the actual overarching mystery of the whole entire series. And with that said, I want to kind of leave it there because I don't want to spoil anything because this is a series that I think a lot of people will jump on board with for the simple fact of you get a young Sherlock story, you get a young X-File group individual story, and you get some really interesting characters that have very interesting kind of uh, ways about them and the way they play out. And it's... It's a series that I was actually kind of intrigued by because I like, you know, X-Files. I like these types of series that involves mystery and, you know, solving clues and the Scooby-Doo gang type of thing, which is, is very much not like the Scooby-Doo gang because it's TV at 14. But there's a lot of violence in this movie, a lot of graphic content, which I'm surprised it didn't get a TVMA rating. But for the most part, it's a TV 14. It's involving kids and stuff like that. But like I said, I was really looking forward to this. I really liked the trailers. They're, they were very strong in what they were doing. They were very exciting. And this this cast, you know, I don't know much about them. Like I said, they're very unknown. They've done a few things here or there. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, of course, played by Henry Lloyd Hughes, who has done a few things. Same thing with uh, Royce Pearson. And there's some other actors that come in here and there. Like, for instance, the the guy who played the Hound in Game of Thrones is in this TV series. Has a, has a couple small things in the series. But for the most part, these individuals are kind of blank slates. So that's what makes it nice is, you know, they're there to really kind of fulfill their acting careers by giving it all they're all in trying to uh, basically present a story that is worth watching in a lot of aspects. Now, the question is, do these individuals, do these characters, does the story ultimately fail or does it ultimately succeed in what it's trying to do? So is it good or bad is basically what it's asking. And uh, this show is awesome. I'm going to be fairly honest. I don't know what other people are going to think about this show, but I had so much fun watching this show. It's dark. It's creepy. It's uncomfortable. It's very much a young adult series, but it holds the air of taking the whole Sherlock Holmes idea and kind of turning it and twisting it on its head. So like when I say it's like a young Sherlock story, 
or a young Indiana Jones story. It's in essence that because you're dealing with the young kids, you're following the young kids for the most of the story. Yes, John Watson and Sherlock Holmes are in the story and, you know, the other characters of the Sherlock Holmes universe. But this is mostly B, Jesse, Spike, Leo, and Billy's story and how they're presenting themselves throughout the series. You know, all these characters are strongly written by Tom Bidwell, who wrote every single episode in the series. They're very in line with what I was expecting, which is a fun cast of characters. They're very unique. They're very different. They're of different, you know, uh, background types and stuff like that. So it's a very diverse cast. And it's a series that just it, it, it revels in its mystery. It revels in its fun and its entertainment. It revels in the time frame, which is the 1800s, late 1800s. And it just has so much fun doing it. You know, when the murder of the week or the mystery of the week type of stuff happens, you get on board with it because it's just, it's so inventive. It's so creative. It's in a background that you really enjoy. So it takes like the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes, takes the Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock Holmes takes the old uh, Basil Rathbone Sherlock Holmes and just really does a fun kind of 180 on it and that's just what I really liked like I said these characters every single one of them have their moments to shine in this series um, I think Jesse and B have the most of the most fun in this movie as well as Leo but I you know Spike is the guy who is almost like the scaredy cat of the series but he's enjoyable to watch he has the the most quips and stuff like that he's the most entertaining Billy is the individual who is the most angered at a lot of stuff but he has a lot of depth to him he has a lot of, you'll understand why his character is the way he is but like i said b who is this individual who like i said doesn't have you know her mother left her at the church you know to be raised by nuns with her sister jesse and stuff like that it was a it's a really you can kind of see why they do what they do and why they act the way they do but you know i think what thaddea grant graham and darcy shaw are doing in this series is you know top top-notch stuff i think they're really strong characters i think the way they play off everyone else are really they're really well done and really well presented but they just they have so much fun you know they're serious when they need to be they're heartfelt when they need to be and they have emotional moments that are really resonant for you know any person that wants to watch this show and enjoy it and this show runs the gamut of comedy horror uh fantasy sci-fi and it does it with good fervor content good you know, reverent stuff and stuff like that i just i had so much fun watching it i really did i think the setting is really beautiful to watch it's you know grimy and dirty and gray and it's very much what you think london england would be like in the 1800s and stuff like that but like I said, the overarching mystery is fun. It's entertaining when it concludes and when you get to the very end of the series, or at least the first season, I think you'll really appreciate what Tom Bidwell and the cast and crew were doing because it doesn't open its cars and it doesn't fully reveal itself till, till it needs to. You know, we have the central mystery, but it's never fully revealed until the time that it needs to do what it needs to do. And like I said, these characters go through so many emotional arcs in this series just in the first season in that it makes you truly kind of love these characters you really get on board for the eight episode arc that this you know, the first season has and you know the only bad thing the only bad thing about the series outside of a few things where it's a little too convenient with this plotting but i kind of expect that with these types of series i think it's kind of you know the way these series run is you need to have characters do certain things have characters act certain ways have plots do certain types of things and you need to kind of find a way to progress the story because you only have eight episodes to do it but it'll be like you know like the first season of snowpiercer for instance where okay that's it's a little too illogical in what it's doing that's a little too off the rails and what it's trying to do and sometimes these characters you know the way they act is a little too juvenile and stupid and whatnot but like i said in the nutshell and the end game of this entire story these are more nitpicks than anything and the only thing that makes me really sad about this series and really kind of mad is the fact that i binged it in one day all eight episodes and now i just want more of it and I have to wait till 2022 for more of that. And that's the kind of downside of having everything at once is you binge it all at once and then you move on to other content, but you really want more of the same content you watch. So now I have to go find another series that will get, you know, wet my appetite like this show does. But that that's more just like, I want more of this. I want the more, one more in my veins, man. And one more. That's how much I love this series so much. It's, it's just fun. It's entertaining. It has a good time with what it's doing. It brings us characters that are well-developed, well-paced, well-written, do goofy stuff, but it's it's a good time. No no alcohol required, as Jeremy John says. And I think it's going to be a series that's going to latch on to a lot of people. I really do. If it doesn't, I'll be shocked because I've seen some series that have been on Netflix that have latched on to people that I'm like, really? This series? 
this is what this is what gets you this is what gets you going i mean like okay but this series i think i think well this will be a series that people will talk about at least for a couple weeks and i think we'll enjoy and like i said i think it's i think it's great i'm gonna give it a nine out of ten like i said the only nitpicks i had were just some of the times that some of the characters do some really stupid stuff but overall you know a nine out of ten isn't bad i just, i really love the series i can't wait for season two hopefully season two doesn't go down the rabbit holes that some series i know have but for a first season of a series that isn't even based off a YA novel, that is a completely original uh, concept. I mean, outside of it being based off Sherlock Holmes, I mean, that's that's kind of like the outline portion of it. I'm saying this is like an actual original story. Uh, it's, it's fun. It's entertaining, and you're going to have a good time watching it. So, anyways, uh, that'll do it. That'll be my take on season one of The Irregulars, the new Netflix original series. When you decide to watch the series, if you do, let me know what you thought. Like I said, it's a series I think people will enjoy. I hope they latch on to, because I want a season two. But anyways, let me know in the comments below what you thought of the series, or at least the first season. Otherwise, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button and join Movie Emporium. As always, hit that notification bell. Stop the finals coming in next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button, and as always, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.